What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you today. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new extension from Alex Schreier that's built to help you randomize different things inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first things first, Random Tools is a brand new extension from Alex Schreier that you can download from the SketchUp extension warehouse. I will link to this in the notes down below. This is a free extension that's basically a set of tools to randomize things in the SketchUp model. So let's go through and take a look at the tools that are contained inside this extension. So first off, let's go ahead and let's uh, take this box and let's make a grid with it real quick. So I'm just gonna use the Move tool in copy mode and I'm just gonna create five copies this way and five copies this way. So what we have here is we have a simple grid. And so the first tool in here is designed to randomly push pull a number of different faces that you have selected inside of SketchUp. So if I was to come in here and select this, this extension allows you to randomly extrude the faces of this object. So in this situation, for example, if we were to just leave this as is and uh, set this to have a minimum extrusion distance of zero and a maximum of one, it's gonna go through and it's gonna randomly push pull all of these objects by some value in between those two values that you set. We're gonna go ahead and leave create new faces on yes. And we're gonna click on okay. So what this does is this goes through and this randomly push pulls this object. And so this can be really, um, th there's a lot of interesting applications for this. So one thing that you might find interesting is if you were to do the same thing with sandbox tools. So if you were to create a grid with sandbox tools, whoops, like this, it's going to look different. So if you run this, do the same thing, it's gonna look different because the sandbox tools faces actually come in as tries. So what this did is this push pulled all of the different geometry in here. So if I was to undo this and do a view show hidden geometry, you can see how these faces are actually made up of triangles rather than squares. So if we randomly run this, it's gonna push pull all of those different triangles in here. So there's a lot of different kind of fun applications for this one. So let's say I was to draw this sphere and then do the same thing you can use this in order to create kind of an interesting shape here as well. So you can see how all of that, that geometry that was in here got push pulled. And so in addition to having the ability to do this with faces, there's also an option in here to randomize vertex positions. And so let's say that we were to create another sandbox like this. And notice you need to be inside of the group because you have to select the actual raw geometry. But let's say we were to select this and run the random vertex positions option, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to randomly move the vertices. So instead of push pulling the faces, it's gonna push pull the uh, points where the edges intersect. So if I run this, you can see how this is randomly going to move that around. So this can be useful for adding like detail um, or a little bit of randomness to let's say maybe like a, uh, let's say maybe like a terrain or something like that. So let's say we were to create another sandbox and let's start by kind of push pulling everything up and down a little bit. Let's say you wanted to add a little bit of noise to this just to make it look a little bit less um, uniform because this looks really um, smooth, which isn't necessarily super realistic. So what you could do is you could select this whole thing and then um, use the randomized vertex positions. And I would only move these probably up and down. So I wouldn't necessarily want these to go on the red or green. And I would make this kind of minor, maybe like a quarter inch or something like that. Or maybe like three or four inches, something like that. So I'm gonna type in a value of three inches, hit okay. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna go through and that's gonna kind of randomize these and add a little bit of noise to it. So now instead of this being perfectly flat, it's got a little bit more of a, um, it's got a little bit more of a like real nature look to it. So in addition to being able to do this, this tool also has the ability to randomly place components on faces. And so let's say, for example, that we had something like this, um, where you had like a terrain and then a tree. But let's say we wanted to kind of randomly place some trees across here. Well, what we could do is we could just drag a box across this and just select some faces like this. And then 
we could run this tool. Whoops, make sure you select your component. You could run this tool, and I'm just going to set my max number of copies per face to one. Notice how you can set a rotation variation, so it'll randomly rotate these, and also randomly scale them. So for our orientation, we're actually gonna select up, and then there's the option in here to place them on a tag if you have one for this. I don't have a tag for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and click OK. What that's gonna do is that's gonna randomly place trees on these faces, just like this. So you can use this to randomly place these objects in here. You do need to be kind of careful though, because notice how this has created a lot of geometry in here, and it can really slow down your models pretty quickly. But notice how these have been randomly rotated and scaled in here as well. So in addition, there's also a tool in here that allows you to place components randomly based on an edge. So um, for example, let's say that we were to take a top-down view of this surface right here. Let's select a couple different edges like this. So I'm just going to do a shift drag to drag over that. So now I have edges and I have an object selected. And so if I select this, and notice you're gonna want your orientation to be up if you're placing trees because we want this to be straight up and down. We don't want the tree orientation to be based on um, the actual direction of the edges that we have selected. But you can set the max number of copies per edge as well as a rotation and scale variation. Then click on OK. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna go through and that's gonna randomly place objects based on the edge you have selected. So this is a really quick way to place things like trees in here. You do need to notice that if you look at these, um, some of them are placed down through the mesh that we have in here, so it's not doing any kind of collision or anything like that. So one option you might have if you wanted to redrop these down here is you might just move them up and then use like drop GC or something like that in order to place them on this surface. So there's also an option in here to randomly scale, rotate, and position objects in your model. So let's say we were to take all of these, let's say we don't like the size of them for whatever reason, right? So um, these are all placed in here. Let's say we don't like the size or the way they came in. You could use the randomize in order to change their rotation as well as their scale variation. So you could use this to adjust the rotation and scale like this. And notice how each object gets rotated and scaled. Um, you do, again, need to be a little bit careful to make sure all of these are actually on your surface, but you can use this to create those random sizes that you see inside of real life really quickly. So randomly swap objects is going to randomly take different objects in here and switch them out. So you can see how right now, for example, I had this one extra tree in here. Every time I click this randomly swap, it's swapping that with other objects in here. At the moment, what this is doing is this is randomly swapping um, all of these objects. So actually all of these pine tree components are getting swapped when we do this as well. So one way to do this if you want to add more variation is you could add some additional trees over here and then select them all and then click on the randomly swap objects and you can see how then you get a little bit more variation in here so you can use this to randomly move these objects around and notice how the scale factor that was applied to these objects um, whatever the pine trees were is also getting applied to these uh, deciduous trees that I put in here as well so you can use this to really quickly swap out those objects and really kind of randomize things in your scenes um, with no issues all right and then finally the last tool will randomize texture positions. And note that this uh, acts a little bit funky when it comes to components. So basically what it does is, you see how I have all of these fence posts modeled in here as a group, but I know this wood board texture doesn't look very good, but we're gonna use it for right now. So the problem with this fence at the moment, other than the low resolution texture, is also that everything is uniform. So you get this weird tiling, right? And each one of these is in here as a group, not a component. Um, and so what I can do is I can select all of these, and then this button right here will randomize the texture positions in here. So what that's doing is for each one of these groups, it's randomly placing in the, it's randomly placing them in here so that you don't get that weird tiling that we had in there before where you get like the same wood knot over and over again. So you can use this to kind of randomize some texture positions in here as well. So there's times and places where this works really well and there's also times and places where it doesn't work as well, but it's definitely a great option to have. Um, and um, you know, especially with being able to do that with a single click of the button, that can be a huge time saver as well.
So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you interested in this extension? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.